How did Bucky Barnes survive the fall in Captain America The First Avenger? In this video, I'm going to take a look at the science behind his survival. Hi there, I'm Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and on this channel you'll find videos in relation to superheroes, Star Wars, science, engineering, and lots of other topics. If you're liking this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Right, let's get into the science behind Bucky Barnes' survival from that famous fall. During a mission to apprehend Armin Zola in Captain America The First Avenger, things don't go as planned. After a blast from a Hydra weapon, Bucky Barnes is left dangling from the outside of a train somewhere in the middle of the mountains. And unfortunately, his good buddy Steve Rogers couldn't get to him on time and it appeared that Barnes fell to his doom. I say that it appeared that he fell to his doom because, well, he didn't. Bucky Barnes comes back from the apparent dead to take on his old war buddy in the 2014 film Captain America The Winter Soldier. And of course, we see Bucky Barnes play a key role in Captain America Civil War, where it turns out he actually was the person who killed Tony Stark's parents. So in this video, I'm going to look at the science behind Bucky Barnes' survival from the fall. And be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video, because I'm going to outline how it might be possible to remove traumatic memories from someone's brain, such as the traumatic memories that Bucky Barnes experienced during and after the fall. First off, let's figure out how far Bucky Barnes actually fell in the first place. To calculate this, I'm going to make some quick assumptions. So let's jump straight into it. Here we have the train with Bucky Barnes and Steve Rogers on the train trying to apprehend Armin Zola. Now the train is traveling down the tracks towards the right and at some point there's the Hydra weapon blast and that leads to Bucky Barnes, well, hanging off the side of the train and eventually then, well, he can hang on no longer and ends up falling from the train. Barnes is now falling and he's experiencing two main forces on his body as he falls. The first one is weight, that's due to his mass. The second one is a drag force, which will actually be acting in the opposite direction to motion and will try and slow him down. For this calculation though, I'm going to leave out the drag force just to make things a little bit easier for myself. Okay, so when Bucky Barnes is hanging off the train, the moment that he lets go or can no longer hang on, his initial velocity is zero meters per second. And as he falls, he starts to speed up. And that acceleration is due to gravity. And acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. The next thing we need to know is the time to fall. Well, in order to calculate that, let's go and take a quick look at the clip from the film and time his fall. Meep, meep. Sorry, I just really couldn't resist using the Roadrunner reference. From the stopwatch, we see that the time is roughly around seven seconds for Bucky Barnes to fall from the train to the bottom of the valley. We can now calculate his distance using a formula which is 0.5 or a half times a times t squared. If I fill in all of those values above, you will find that the distance that he fell is 240 meters. Number two, did Bucky Barnes lose his arm before the fall? Well, this doesn't seem to be the case. Here's a snapshot from the film showing Bucky Barnes as he falls from the train. We can clearly see that he has both arms, which then would mean that his arm was damaged somewhere during the fall. This doesn't mean that his left arm wasn't damaged by the blast from the Hydra weapon, but it seems more likely that he lost his arm on the way down or upon impact in the valley. Next, how did Bucky Barnes survive the cold at the bottom of the valley? Well, earlier in the film, Captain America, the first Avenger, Steve Rogers rescues a number of soldiers from a Hydra base. He goes on the search for Bucky Barnes and finds him strapped to a table. Now it turns out that Bucky Barnes had been experimented on by Armin Zola and the Red Skull. And part of that experimentation 
involved giving him a super soldier serum or something perhaps related to the super soldier serum. Now this treatment would have changed his body in a number of different ways and given him a number of additional abilities. The treatment might have provided him with the ability to survive extended periods in very cold conditions. And to achieve this, his body might have been genetically modified so that it could produce anti-freeze proteins which are proteins that can bind to ice crystals and stop these ice crystals from forming because if ice crystals form, they'll damage cells. You can check out my video on antifreeze proteins and the winter soldier to learn more about that. Another thing to think about is why didn't Bucky Barnes bleed out at the bottom of the valley? Remember earlier on, I mentioned that Bucky Barnes had been the subject of experiments by Hydra and Armin Zola. I mentioned, of course, that he's got the antifreeze proteins, but another ability he might have received is rapid healing. This rapid healing ability might have allowed his body to rapidly heal any wounds after the fall, and those wounds may have included severed arteries, for example, like a severed artery in his left arm. How did Hydra find him first? Well, it seems sensible for the US forces to send out a search party for Bucky Barnes after the mission. But of course, this mission took place in enemy territory, which means it could have been quite risky for the US forces to go back in after they had suddenly kidnapped Armin Zola. But it's Hydra who finds Bucky Barnes first, and here's why. Just before the train ambush, Armin Zola receives a command from Hydra to speed the train up. And when he receives that command, it's quite likely he would have given his position at the moment he received the command. So when the train went off the radar and Armin Zola went missing, Hydra would have gone to that point to start their search for the train and Armin Zola. When Hydra forces arrived at the last known location, they would have found pieces of the train on the track and also at the bottom of the valley. And when they went to search the bottom of the valley, they would have found pieces of the train and of course, a certain Bucky Barnes. And the bonus topic. As you can imagine, falling from a train to the bottom of a valley and losing your left arm in the process was probably quite traumatic for Bucky Barnes. Now, Hydra have a treatment in place we've seen in the films that allows them to wipe his mind and basically reprogram him so he doesn't remember everything. How could Hydra actually achieve this approach? How could they remove traumatic memories? Because if they can remove the anxiety associated with them or the trauma associated with them, they could prevent perhaps post-traumatic stress disorder for Bucky Barnes after such an event in his life because falling from a train and losing your left arm is quite eventful. Can memories be completely wiped from someone's mind? Well, there is real scientific research out there that suggests that it's possible for animals. For instance, in 2017, a team of researchers from the US and Canada investigated the possibility of removing any memories associated with anxiety or PTSD in the brains of snails. They carried out experiments on the snails and they showed that certain drugs can be used to weaken certain memories stored in the neurons of the brain. And the memories they wanted to weaken or remove were the ones associated with anxiety or post-traumatic stress disorder. And in 2020, researchers from Japan showed that fruit flies can lose long-term memories of traumatic events if you just put them in the dark. This research showed that light is really important for retaining and maintaining long-term memories. In their experiments, the fruit flies were placed in the dark for two days, and when they came out, they had lost all memory of said traumatic events. In the MCU, we see Hydra using a very complicated device to wipe memories from Bucky Barnes' brain. But based on the research that I just mentioned, here are my tips for future Hydra enthusiasts who wish to wipe memories from bloodthirsty assassins such as Bucky Barnes. Number one, give said assassin drugs to weaken certain memories in the brain. For Bucky Barnes, these drugs would target the memories associated with traumatic events or that could cause PTSD and that would leave him then, well, hopefully not too scarred by his endeavors. 
Number two, you can put Bucky Barnes in the dark to remove long-term memories that the drugs just won't affect. And of course, you might want to think about freezing him, which will prevent any major changes to the neurons in his brain, but provided that he's frozen in such a way that allows the drugs to weaken the memories or weaken the molecules in the brain associated with long-term memories of traumatic events. Thanks for watching this video on Bucky Barnes' survival from the fall in Captain America The First Avenger and of course taking a look at how you can remove traumatic memories from the brain of the assassin. Stay tuned for more videos in relation to superheroes, Star Wars, science engineering and lots of other topics. And be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos as soon as they go online. I've been Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and until I see you next time, always think super.